All right, guys, welcome to another instructional video from Highland Cycles. Today, we are going to be replacing the linkage bearings and shock bearings on my YZ250, uh, but this is going to be the same for pretty much every uh, bike that has a linkage or a shock, which is most. Uh, not all of them have linkages, but um, using super simple shop tools that you should have in your garage, um, showing that you don't have to have a fancy press like that or anything else fancy but you can do this with the stuff that you got. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We are using OEM parts from Yamaha because I got tired of replacing them using uh, all balls and stuff like that. They'd work fine for a while, they'd be nice and tight, but they'd wear out way too fast. So um, obviously I've already taken the bike apart. I'm not gonna put that in the video because it's pretty straightforward. Just take a bunch of nuts and bolts off, get it all apart. Um, but then we're gonna take our parts right here over to the parts washer wash them up get all the kind of big stuff off and then i'm dumping all of that into our ultrasonic cleaner which is this one right here i'll put a, a link in the description for where i got this on amazon um, if you buy it on amazon and use my links in our videos it does really help us out a lot we actually make a little bit of money um it's awesome but if you have a local place that sells stuff like that, please buy it from your local shop or hardware store or whatever because um, I definitely believe in supporting local, um, but not a lot of places carry stuff like that. So anyway, um, in that ultrasonic is going uh, Fabuloso and water. It's a 10 liter deal. I put probably two cups of Fabuloso in with the 10 liters of water, get it nice and hot, 60 degrees Celsius, run it for 45 minutes. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at what we got here. There's that beforehand. Got them all cleaned up. That is a much happier view than before. Uh, so now I'm gonna show you how to do this with just common tools. We're gonna just stuff that you probably have in your garage or you should have in your garage. And if you don't, you can buy it super cheap. So let's start by getting these bearings out. So find a socket that's the right size. It is the same size as the race, but smaller than the hole it goes into. So in this case, a 19 works great. Then you're gonna find a socket that's bigger than this outside ring uh, that you can put on there to, to stabilize it and then it'll push the race into. So and we're, then we're gonna use our vise, which everyone should have a vise in their garage. I'm just gonna squeeze it down. Take it back out, check it, make sure everything's good. There we go. There's one race. Now we need to get the other race on the rest of the way out, so we'll need some sort of extension on here. Got a little guy. Find that back up. There we go. Bing! Shiny. So I'm gonna do the other one real fast. All right guys, so new bearings, gotta push them in. The deal with these um, bearings is you just need to have them flush with this surface. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it started. You kinda so there's, there's gonna be a rounded edge and a flatter edge. The flat edge is gonna go out, right? So the rounded edge is made so it kinda helps guide it to start. I'm gonna take this, and we're just gonna start it with this. There we go. The way I like to do this is I get a, a socket that's bigger than the race but still smaller than this outer edge, so that when it pushes it in, this will automatically stop at that edge, making it flush without having to try to be, you know, too careful. So, open this up a whole bunch. So when you push on it, it feels like it stops, right? So I'll take this part. And look, just like that, magic, it's nice and flush, just like it's supposed to be. 
and I leave the little plastic guys in there because that helps keep the uh, bearings where they're supposed to be while I'm doing all this and I can push it out later. Yeah. Next one, round side. Nice automatic stop, like I said. Now, we got those exactly where they need to be. Again, I'm still gonna leave these plastic things in here. I can pull them out. We're just gonna leave those in there, holding them where they need to be, and we're gonna put these in, and then uh, we'll put the rest of the stuff, the seals and everything, and I'll show you how we do that. All right, so now that we got the bearings in there, we got the little plastic pieces in there, holding everything where they are. We got washers that go in next, then seals, then we can slide the inner races in, and then the collars, and then it'll be safe to just move it around and we won't worry about losing pins. Um, but uh, we're gonna start by putting uh, washers and seals in. Super simple, washer, seal, and you can just do these by hand, like you don't have to. They're, they go in really easy, so you just push them in. Other side, there we go. Got a brand new race. Take a little bit of grease, put it on there. And these bearings already have grease on them from the factory, but you want a little bit of extra there. And you can start to push the plastic out, but you can do it with this race so that you don't lose any pins. It just goes in like that. Plastic comes out, take our collars, boom, just like that, all shiny and brand new. Now we'll get this side done, uh, then we got to do this one, and this one goes a little bit differently. All right, now the dog bone. This one honestly is a lot more of a pain in the butt, <laughs> mainly because inside here it necks down to hold the bearings which is good that means you can't like over press the bearings in but it also means you can't just push them through so you got to drive them out and they don't always want to come out but with your vice if you got soft jaws which you absolutely should have if you don't you should definitely just go buy some right now chop this thing up you don't have to go crazy and then we're gonna get a punch got a curve punch Go in here and we're gonna drive them out from the inside out. And here's where it gets interesting. So it's not one to catch on that thing. Part of it's the shape of this. I'm gonna go hit this on the grinder and shape it up a little bit. So I sharpen that up. I I a little off this and then I radius this a little bit more so it's nice and sharp see if we can't get better purchase on that it's not doing what I want it to do it's not coming out this is kind of a normal thing to have happen so I'm gonna show you how we deal with this um, again using simple stuff so the problem is the race doesn't have any needles in it, so there's nothing to drive against. The other one popped right out, but this one's kind of folding in on the edges of the race. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come in here with a uh, die grinder. This is now going outside of just super simple tools, but still something that most people have. I'm going to take a burr bit that can cut that metal engage our safety squints and we're going to very easily we're going to take this in here and we're going to cut this metal and we're going to be super careful not to go into the aluminum it's not always easy all right now i'm going to take a nice sharp chisel and yes, it did touch the aluminum just a tiny bit, but that's okay because we're putting a new race in that's going to take up that room. Take our chisel, come in here, and we're going to peel this back. There we go. You take a look right in there. So you can see where I'm going with this. See how it's moving? So gonna tighten that up 
Come in here, we're just gonna get that loose. Now it's loose all the way around. Comes out. Let me clean this up and I'll show you all the damage that was done. Hard to see, but that little bit of mo like right there, ding that just a tiny bit. But that is no big deal. Since we're putting a brand new bearing in, that will go right over that imperfection and make zero difference. Um, and this is probably like the, I don't know, sixth or eighth <laughs> set of bearings on this bike. Maybe more, I don't know. It seems like a lot. Um, so if I have to buy a new one of these the next time I do it, that's really not a big deal. I've got my money's worth. So started just like we do the other one. Now this one, we want a socket that is smaller than this outside piece so that it can push it in till it stops. There we go. I'm just gonna go till it stops. There we go. Boom. Just like that. And you can look down in here, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but if you look down here, you can see that it's seated all the way against this inner uh, ridge. So it's all good. Again, rounded side goes in. I gotta go. Boom, ready to rock. This one doesn't have washers in it, so we just put the seals in. Tap that sucker in there. Plastic piece comes out. And there we go. Now we're basically ready to start going back together. Um, I don't necessarily need to show you how to do all that. It's pretty simple. Uh, reinstalling it. But see, you can replace all these bearings with a vise and some sockets. You don't need a press. You don't need a special tool to get it out of there. Um, I did have to use a die grinder and a bit to get that thing um, out, but again, most people have that in their shop. So now we're ready to go. Old uh, Jolene back here is going to have all brand new shiny linkage bearings, and everything's going to be all greased up, ready to go. We'll go for a ride this weekend.